A lot of you have seen me use the Canopus ADVC 110. It works great with Premiere Pro if you're outputting to a standard definition CRT monitor. The motion graphics will be silky smooth. The image will be crisp and clean. The ADVC 110 can output 4K and high definition timelines when using Premiere Pro. It'll be okay if you do cuts only editing, but if you use any type of motion graphics, they might be a little bit jerky. You'd be better off getting the Intensity Shuttle by Blackmagic Design. I want to let people know the video clip that is playing on the screen right now is for reference purposes only. I know you, the viewer, aren't going to see the same silky smooth motion path that I see when I'm two feet in front of my CRT monitor, and you're not going to have the same crisp, clean image that I see when I'm two foot in front of my CRT monitor. Here's an article I stumbled across recently. The person wrote, I started editing with the Fast Video Machine when I was cutting the Video Maker TV show and our production was shot on Hi8 tape and then mastered to Super VHS for distribution to our broadcaster, the USA Network at that time. I remember being in a discussion forum in 2000 and somebody had the Fast AV Master. It's only, I think, a $600 capture card. It doesn't have any real-time performance acceleration to it at all. It's just basically an I.O. device, but they had cut some commercials with it and they uploaded some samples. This is way before YouTube was available, so you had to upload video clips to the website itself, and I thought it was really interesting. At that time, I had my RTX 2000, and other people were using the RTX 2000 to do professional work and output in real time, to Super VHS tape decks, which is pretty interesting. I later went from the RTX 2000, I also had a Pinnacle Pro 1, and I ended up keeping the Canopus DV Storm. As a lot of you know, the Canopus DV Storm could output to mini DV tape in real time. People were doing professional work using Hi8, Super VHS, mini DV, as well as HDV. The problem with the real-time capture cards from Pinnacle, Matrox, and even Canopus was the fact that you needed to install drivers, and sometimes they might be funky with Windows 2000, but it might work great with Windows 98 or Windows XP. You also had to use their effects. Instead of using the motion blur with Premiere Pro, you would have to use the motion blur effect provided by Matrox or Pinnacle. And it was just kind of a pain in the ass to use that type of system. The DV converters were really cool because you didn't have to rely on third-party plugins from Matrox, Canopus, or Pinnacle. You just simply used the motion blur from Premiere Pro, or you used the picture-in-picture -picture of Premiere Pro, or you used the color correction tools of Premiere Pro. That's what made it really interesting to do video editing using these DV converters. They made it really super simple. They were plug and play. They were recognized as a mini DV cam. If you didn't have a Firewire card, you simply install it in a Windows 2000 system or a Windows XP system. And the support for Firewire was built right into the operating system. There was no need to install drivers. It really was a really cool way to edit. I'll be the first to admit it didn't need plugins, but at the same time in 2003, it might have been helpful to have one of the capture cards with real-time acceleration if you wanted to do like three or four video layers because when Premiere Pro first released, if you had like a two gigahertz Pentium 4, you might only be able to do cuts only editing. If you had a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4, you might have been able to do a picture in picture at high quality, but you wouldn't have been able to do any color correction. On the other hand, if you had a 3.2 gigahertz dual Xeon computer back in 2003, you may have been able to do a picture-in-picture, -picture, color correct both video layers, plus add a lower third, all in real time, all at high quality. So it was a really cool way to edit. The real-time performance cards could usually work pretty decent, although a lot of people were starting to think, why spend $1,100 or even $1,200 on a real-time video capture card when you could just put that $1,100 into building a dual Xeon system? And that, I think, was the better way to go about 
doing video editing. You know, put your money into a better computer and simply use a digital video converter instead of a dedicated video capture card with real-time performance. As a lot of you know, in 2005, the Pentium D processors hit the market. They were 64-bit. They were kind of based off the Pentium 4 architecture, but there were two of them on one CPU die. So it's basically a dual core. In 2006, we had the Core 2 Duals hit the market and the Core 2 Quads hit the market. By 2006, most video capture card manufacturers realized there was no need to try and put real-time acceleration processors on the video capture cards themselves. They knew the CPUs and the computers were getting fast enough to do all the real-time special effects. Back in 2003, or even in 2006, if you were working with mini DV cameras that costed $2,800 and could do professional broadcast work, you were good to go. You could just drop the video clips into Adobe Premiere Pro, use a Canopus ADVC 110 to monitor your video editing on broadcast compliant equipment, and when you drop that mini DV tape off for playback, you have a pretty good idea of what your video project will look like once it gets broadcasted. That was a real nice way to edit. I remember in the Canopus forums back in like 2004, even in 2006, you could find Final Cut Pro editors with a setup almost identical to what I have here. Same with Avid editors, Edius editors, and Premiere Pro editors. There were quite a few people using these Canopus DV converters, although at that time, like I said, I had a DAC100. Obviously, Canopus makes other DV converters that are much more expensive. I just want to say that if you're using Premiere Pro with a DV converter, you might want to stay in software mode as far as the Mercury playback engine is concerned. It'll probably play a little bit smoother. Keep in mind, if you're editing standard definition, any quad core will be able to play multiple layers with multiple effects. After watching this video, I hope people can understand why I liked using the DV converters back in 2003 and even in 2008. As of now, I use a Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle for real-time playback on broadcast compliant equipment. The Intensity Shuttle doesn't have any hardware acceleration. It's just an I.O. device. 